What's going on guys, it's Brendan from Outbound Media here and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to create clouds with just a few simple brushes here in Photoshop. Let's get at it. So open up the project you want to add your clouds into. So in this case this is my project and now all I'm needing is to add the fog below the castle to make it look like it's high up on a cliff or something like that. So the first thing that I did is I had to go and get some brushes from an online source. So luckily they are totally free. So the link, just click that link below the video. And then this, this page will pop up, click download. And then after you wait a second, it'll start downloading automatically for you. You can double click on the zip file, it'll open itself up. Now you'll have your brush pack and with a dot abr so now you'll open your next finder window and you'll want to go to applications and then adobe photoshop and then presets brushes and then we'll just dra all you do is just drag and drop that abr file right into there so i've already done that so i'm not going to do it again but you go ahead and do that and then once it's done you can exit out come back into photoshop Make sure you select your brush tool by pressing B or clicking the brush icon. Going up to your brush, clicking the settings button, going down to load brushes, and then follow the same path back if it doesn't already automatically pop up. So applications, Photoshop presets brushes, and then find the new brush. So in this case, powder, free powder Photoshop brushes, and then click open. And then once, it's, once you open it, it will load down and you'll find all these cool new brushes that you have. So you can test them out if you want, um, but that's totally up to you. Anyways, let's move on with the tutorial. So once you've imported your brushes, you're gonna wanna make create a new layer. We're gonna call this one Mid Color Clouds, since we are making three different shades. And you can go ahead and pick whatever brush you'd like. But for me, I just want one that sort of has little extra bits that stick out so it's not su such a condensed looking cloud I guess and I'm going to sample the highlighted area on this waterfall because I want the clouds in the waterfall to kind of match so this looks about the brightest area perfect and I'm just going to go and I'm going to click around you can totally click at random then since since the brush isn't changing it's just the same brush over and over what you can do to change it up a little bit without actually changing the brush is holding the R key and you can rotate the image and now your brush will affect the image in different ways. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make one more layer and then I'm going to now sample sort of a middle of the line, something between the highlights and the shadows right about there. Now I'm gonna grab a new brush and I'm just gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna just click around at random, changing up the size, doesn't really matter. And again, I'm going to rotate around the image and sort of just play around with it. Cool. Now lastly, we'll, we'll quickly rename it to dark clouds. And now we'll make one new layer, one more new layer. And now I'm going to sample the, the darkest area. So make sure you have a brush tool selected again and sample the darkest area and now I'm going to grab a new brush from our brush pack that we just downloaded and I'm going to again just click around at random clouds are random so you can be random now you don't want to go too crazy with the uh, you don't want to go too crazy with the darks so I'm just going to do just a little bit like that and I'm going to rename this shadow clouds Cool. So now as you can see this these look pretty terrible. So now that what we want to do is we want to go in and blend them all. So our mid-color clouds, so the first ones that I created that hold the bulk of what the substance of these clouds are, are we want those to stick around and be the most noticeable. Well the other two sets of clouds, we're gonna have to adjust the fill and opacity to make them blend a little bit better. So I'm gonna go to my shadow clouds and I'm just gonna adjust the fill and make them a little bit less noticeable, a little less in your face. 
Cool, Let, let's stick with 25% for now. Now I'm going to go down to my other clouds, my dark clouds, and I'm going to adjust that fill as well. So now I've, I've noticed that there's a bit of an empty space here, so I'm just going to go down to my mid-color clouds, sample an area of it, and I'm just going to fill that in really quickly. Perfect. Once you've gone ahead and blended in the different aspects of the clouds, since this is actually powder, a uh, powder brush and not clouds, if you zoom in, you can see the little, the little granules in the brush, which is not what a cloud looks like, right? So to, do, to fix that, it's not a big deal. What we can do is select all of our layers that have the clouds on them. We'll turn off all the other ones. And so now we should only have our clouds being shown and we're going to hold shift command and E. So what that does is basically what happened is now all of those three layers are up in one layer. Now they're all combined. So now we can use make create a new layer. We'll call this cloud stamp and we'll select our clone stamp tool by pressing the clone stamp icon or press S on your keyboard. Once you have the cloud sample layer, you can go ahead and hold alt, click the area that you want to sample from. So by clicking alt, and then now wherever you paint that area will be replacing it. Perfect. So you can just go ahead and paint over all the areas that you feel look, look a little, little bit not cloud like because it is, it is a powder brush. So you, you're just trying to get rid of all those granules and make it look a little bit more make it look a little bit more soft as if it flows together a little bit nicer. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to just go through this quickly and then I will meet you guys after I am done. And now it starts to look a little bit more like a cloud. So once you've done this, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to create a new layer and we're going to fill it with black. So we'll get our paint bucket tool, make sure our foreground color is black. So you can do that by pressing D or just clicking on this and selecting black. Now we'll just click on our image. Now our whole layer is now black. We're going to go up to filter, down to render, and then clouds. Cool. Now we'll go to our layer mode and we're going to go down to screen, which takes out all the black. And now we have our clouds that we can move around, I guess. So I'm going to press command T to transform. I'm going to go to perspective and I'm just going to change the perspective on them. So they, they are a bit more balanced with the plane that our clouds that we just painted with are on. Cool. So now I'm going to create a layer mask by pressing our layer mask icon and I'm going to press command I to invert that mask. So now all our all of our clouds that we just created are gone, but we can get them back by just painting onto our mask with white, which is 100% visible. So all I'm going to do is make sure my opacity is nice and low. So I'm going to go maybe let's start with 10% and I'm going to bring the flow down to 80. Now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to paint over around the edge of the castle and in the corners as well. So you might be wondering why I'm doing this. The clouds that we just created with our brush is basically the substance of the clouds and what we're seeing visually, whereas the fog that we're now painting in now is sort of like the added bit of cloud that is coming up the sides of the castle and around the edges just to give it a little bit more of a realistic look. So you can go ahead and just play around with the opacity and Add it into different areas that you feel are fit and that's looking pretty good to me. Now that we've painted over our clouds with our fog we can go ahead and we can add a few different we can do a few different things to liven it up a little so I'm going to go ahead and just add a neutral density filter so gradient tool ND make sure linear gradient is selected and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drag around, darken up some of the areas. And now you can also even get your dodge and burn tool. So to do that, you can go hold alt over the new layer, click new layer, and then go to overlay, fill, click the check on the fill with overlay neutral color, 50% gray and click okay. Now you can press O or select your dodge or burn tool. Burn is to darken, dodge is to lighten. I'm gonna go burn, make sure midtones are selected. Your range is midtones, and I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna play around with some of the some of the fog here. You're gonna want to go back and forth between dodging and burning till where you're feeling looks good and natural to you. 
Once you finish all these steps, you can go ahead and you can do your own color, color adjustments to it. You can use your curves, levels, color balance, gradient maps, whatever you see fit to make your clouds blend in with the rest of your image. So this is what my image ended up looking like. So I used the exact same steps. I went ahead and I created three separate shades of clouds. I then went and clone stamped over tops the areas that looked a little bit like chunks of powder that I didn't want to see anymore. Then for the third step, I went ahead and created our fog. And then once I created my fog, I just painted over the clouds to give it a little bit more depth in life so it didn't feel so flat. It made it appear a little bit more 3D. And then lastly, I added some ND around the edges and then dodged, then used dodge and burn to add a bit more dimension and interest into our clouds. Other than that, that's all I have for you guys. I hope this helped you. If you want to see more of my work, make sure to check out my website at outboundmedia.net or follow me on Instagram at burnwills. I hope to see you back here next Wednesday for another new Photoshop tutorial. See you then.